Good morning. Wow, finally the last day, or last chapter of this book. I'll be covering this today and tomorrow, of course, Easter. So the resurrection day. So I'll bring a special message tomorrow. And then Monday, I'm gonna wrap it all up. And then finally go back to Acts chapter 11 again on our 199th day. Oh, let's start with prayer. Father, what a journey, Lord, this has been. 38 days of Christian life through Pastor Pong's teaching. I miss him so much, uh, but at least he now speaks to me through his book, and I learn so much from him, Lord, and, and now begin to understand why he was who he was, because he lived according to this teaching, Lord. Thank you, Father. I want to be like him, live like him, mimic what he has done. As he has imitated Christ, I want to imitate him, Lord. Help us to be there in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. As I told you already, he believes there's a two track study the Bible, word of God, and then prayer. It's like a train. Let's say your faith life is like a train, it's not a monorail, <laughs> it's a dual rail. Prayer, word, word, prayer. It has to go in pace. So that your train of faith, the faith of train, your life of faith, like a train, will not derail. Uh, just yesterday, several people died because the train in Taiwan derailed. So we cannot derail. So word of God is very, very crucial. And I read out of Amos 8.11, as always, three times meditate. This is word of the Lord. Not a famine for bread or thirst for water but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. Not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. Not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. This is word of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> He writes, there are a lot of churches, but not a lot of living words from the Lord. Amen to that. By then already, Korea is experiencing prosperity, gospel penetrating. And he's grieved that there's enough churches, but they're not really talking about sacrifice, about the cross, being sinners. They talk about put your faith and cash in on your faith. Live a prosperous life. Drive that million dollar car, live in that hundred ten million dollar home. They're more than you know. I mean, I remember watching a message by uh, that particular pastor. I just was flipping channel. He was on TV, he's always on TV, asking people to give to his ministry through TV. Uh, hey, he claims that he doesn't receive any salary from this mega church. Why? Because he just makes a love offering, you know, once or twice a year. And I think I heard it's like six million dollars or something. And law offering, by law, you don't have to pay tax. So that's what he does. So anyway, he said he sells books. And he said, Jesus died on the cross. He suffered for us. So we don't have to suffer. You don't have to suffer. You never have to suffer. You know, and I'm, of course, that's true. I believe that too. And then, the first, and then he says, now because he suffered on the cross. Now this is a resurrection message. He says, now go ask him for everything you want. You're going to get it. He suffered for you. I think that's just wrong message about the cross. <laughs> well, needless to say, the church is built on the foundation of the word and must grow from the word. Believers must realize, identify their sins from the word. We touch and experience the cross only through the word. There can be no faith movement that is not based on the word. There shouldn't be a church life without the word of God, the living word of God that talks about the cross, talks about the suffering, no cross, no crown, right? And because the faith must grow forth from the word, if faith is not based in the word, it becomes baseless faith because your word, Psalm 119 says, is a lamp to my feet and light to my path. And how sweet are the words you to my taste? Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And I say, amen to that, amen, amen. You know, true. I, I've been studying the word and, it, you know, it's crazy. Studying the word, studying the word and it gets sweeter and sweeter. Just like 
It's like drilling on through a rocks and dirt and then touch the water and go deeper and deeper, and deeper. As it goes deeper, the water gets sweeter, much purer, all the filth and dirt and particles, right? Gone. The word of God is like that. That's why we need to cling to the word and, and be mature in the Lord. I mean, he, the, the imagery that he writes about is actually like baking of kimchi. He says that it has to grow, it has to, and then mature. And mature actually means to ferment. The word he used in Korea is fermenting. As it ferments, kimchi becomes, oh, the taste and the depth, the flavor. And he talks about the word of God having this incredible flavor. Taste the word of God, he says. That's what I'm talking about. He says, well, we need to develop taste for this word of God. And, and, and we must develop daily habit of eating a few pages of Bible, 66 books, 1,189 1, chapters. You eat three meals a day. Why don't you read three chapters a day, he says. If you do that, you read the entire Bible once a year. If you do six meals a day, then you get to read Bible twice a year. And then if you do that for 10 years, you get to read the entire Bible 20 times a year. Or 20 times in 10 years. Oh, I go, wow. See, that's the, the, my core teaching, 1991, when I started Oikos. I said three chapters a day must, right? Because I was trained up to that point by a brother who deceased, Dennis Kim Ung Jun, brother Kim Ung Jun. When I was 18, went to Wednesday night Bible study at UC Berkeley. Guess what? He was leading the Bible study. He said, hey, I came up with this chart. He gave a chart. Let's read 10 chapters a day and see what happens. Wow, you know, I had it in my Bible. I've been reading 10 chapters a day for many decades, you know, after I became a pastor and I'm devouring the words and I'm, you know, Book of Acts, I wrote 1,200 pages of my note, Book of John, 1,200, you know, 600 pages. And, I mean, Romans, 1,000, I mean, on and on and on, I was going through the Bible. And I met Kim Ong Jun, Hyungnim, or uh, Brother Paul Kim later, then his turn, Paul. He said, oh, Hyung, thank you so much for challenging me. For many decades, I've been doing this. So if I read 10 chapters a day, it will be six is what? Twice, so almost uh, 3.5, right? And then I, three point times, so twice. And then I did it for 20 years, almost like 70 times, right? Crazy, 70, almost 100 times. That's crazy. And then the brother Paul said, what, you're still doing that? I started you guys up, but I never did it. I'm like, oh my Lord. <laughs> but I, I benefited from being, I guess, full for Christ. I thought everybody was doing it for many decades of reading, meditating on the word of the Lord. Tremendously helped my spiritual journey. Those who believe in the Bible, who wants to read, need to develop a habit of always carrying it. How comfortable is it that you can now put the Old and New Testament in your pocket? <laughs> well, it's very prophetic, isn't it? <laughs> now everybody has iPhone and put it in the pocket. I mean, he's talking about little Bible now. It used to be huge Bible. Now the printing technology has developed so much that you could put it in the little, put it in your pocket, big pocket when traveling. Even if you forget toiletries, don't forget the Bible, he said. Recently, I have heard some of the choir members say that perhaps because their mission is to sing, they do not they uh, they do not forget hymn books, but do not have Bible. I have seen this. This is not acceptable. He said, he said, some of his choir members they say, oh, my calling is worship, so I don't need to bring Bible. He said, nonsense. Without Bible, you cannot live a proper Christian life. Prayer, Bible. Then as he concludes, he says, that is the normal Christian life. Always the Bible becomes natural, require the way you cannot live without having Bible. It is like this, you must, has to be the normal way of the Christian life. Hallelujah. Do you live such life? You know, when I, uh, finish this teaching, I appreciate uh, Pastor Bang even more. And I begin to understand why he lived such life, because such an exemplary life, and why he had such faith, 
zeal for life. And even the, his constant usage of the word taste, I didn't understand why I realized, you know, this is reflecting on our, my encounter with him. For, I mean, so many times he treated us to lunch and dinner. We did not went to the same restaurant once. I think he was really foodie, I realized now. He said, oh, do you like this uh, mook, you know? Mook means mosquito in Kamai, Cambodia. But mook means it's those jelly, uh, I don't know what you call it. He said, oh, let's go eat that. And then we drive 20 minutes. He said, oh, let's go Peking duck. And then we drive literally 30, 40 minutes to go there. Oh, let's see Shabu Shabu and we'll go to another. And I realized, wow, he really, really enjoyed life. And he understood, you know, the taste. And he lived, he said the word of God is life that is tasteful. It's wonderful. If you enjoy word of God like that, then you eat it like three meals a day, you eat it. I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Bong. I want to live like you. I want to enjoy life. I want to live life abundant and enjoy the word of God just like you. And, and, and take in the word of God like food you know, three times a day. And, you know, after that uh, long journey of reading it intensively, extensively, then I've been kind of forgetting about it for a while because of all these crazy days of uh, preaching, teaching. So I'm going to go back. When I go back to Book of Acts, I will be reading three chapters every day, Book of Acts, through and through, so that when I teach, that it will be in the context, through all the Old Testament, New Testament, three chapters. And then when three chapters of reading is done in the morning, then I will teach Book of Acts to you. Let's, let's try to do that. Why not? You eat three meals a day, right? So why don't we read three chapters a day? That will really help your spiritual journey and keep that in balance. The prayer and words, like the two rails of the train, balanced, balanced, right? So you don't derail. Same length, same space, balanced, not tilting, right? And then you will succeed and be live victorious life. Let me pray for you. Father, so I'm going to spend some time in prayer because it's not just words, Lord. It's impartation. We, I don't, information is important, critical, but at the same time, impartation, Father. I ask Holy Spirit, God, to come, impart to us, anoint us. Father, if those who are listening to this right now and seeing this right now, God, let them be impart with the Holy Spirit anointing. Holy Spirit anointing, gifting, now permeate so that they will get touched by your spirit, motivated to read the word of God, three chapters a day or six chapters a day or 10 chapters a day and pray fervently seeking you, Father. And they, they overcome their issues, overcome their problems. Father, they will not make their problem problems, Lord. They will speak to the problem, give it to you, and then fall into this wonderful Christian life, Lord mature, deepening in their faith, Lord. Each day, be victorious. Each day, they'll have revival, Lord. Thank you, praise you, give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wow, hallelujah. Amen. So as I said already, uh, have a wonderful, wonderful Easter tomorrow. Thank you. In Jesus' name, brothers and sisters, love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.